Hello everyone and welcome to the semi-finals of the uh, Aim Chess Rapid Knockout. We have a game that simply keeps on giving it is Young Shishtov Duda with the white pieces against Magnus Carlsen. And this is their second game of the match. F uh, first game ended in a draw, but this one, it, I mean, it's just a, a spectacular one. You guys will enjoy it. Uh, so much uh, is happening in it. Uh, so let's dive straight into it. Uh, Duda with the white pieces opens with d4. We have knight to f6 by Magnus, c4, we have g6 and now knight to c3. We have bishop to g7, the king's Indian defense is on the board, and now pawn to e4. We have pawn to d6 and h3 now. So this has all been played before, nothing new here. Knight b to d7, bishop to e3, and now pawn to e5. And uh, again, it's a fairly standard position where white almost exclusively advances the pawn to d5 and grabs more space in the center. However, here, Duda plays knight to f3, and now it's, uh, well, very, very uh, slippery territory. There are only a handful of games where this was played, as it allows Black to actually capture on d4, which is Black's original idea. So okay, Magnus says, "All right, show me, show me what's happening here." E captures on d4, Knight captures on d4, and now here we have castles by Magnus. Uh, we have pawn to g4 by Duda, uh, saying that okay, he might be interested in advancing to g5 at some point. Rook to e8, and now we have Bishop to g2. Uh, adding a defender as uh, with rook to e8 there was a threat of actually winning the e4 pawn so knight to c5 magnus says all right what are we doing about the e4 pawn and duda says uh, not all that much queen to c2 and it is now as of move 11 that we have uh, a completely new game so the pawn is defended but not really because magnus just captures it not knight f captures on e4 and what's the idea behind the capture well the white king is uh, in the center of the board and you will not be able uh, to, to just keep it there forever. So knight captures on e4, we have knight captures on e4, bishop captures on e4, and now queen to e7, putting pressure on the bishop here, and even though Duda is for the moment up a knight, you will not be able to um, uh, keep that extra piece. So here pawn to f3, and now just c6. You will at some point um, advance the pawn to d5 or to f5, and you will uh, force Duda to give back one of the bishops, as uh, there, there are two bishops in front of the white king, that's still in the center of the board. So here, queen to b3 by Duda, and now pawn to f5 by Magnus. We have g captures on f5, g captures on f5, and now if the bishop moves, of course, queen captures on e3, comes with check, and Magnus solved uh, all of his problems, but the Duda shows what he really prepared. He just castles queen side here. And okay, like we said, he had to give back the piece, otherwise he would just get crushed. So f captures on e4, and now rook h to g1. Uh, Magnus's king side is completely busted, so it makes sense to attack the black king as soon as possible. King to h8, unpinning, as you don't want um, uh, something like knight moves and then bishop comes uh, to this diagonal with the king still being on g8. Uh, but now Duda just goes uh, straight uh, for the kill. Rook captures on g7. And this is basically the only point of the attack where Magnus has a chance of uh, defending, but it's so brutal that uh, I I'm going to have to show it to you. Magnus missed it. Uh, you, you have to play queen captures on g7, but it makes no sense because why would you put the king and the queen on this diagonal? Uh, but sometimes chess just works that way. Now Duda would uh, play knight captures on c6, um, move the knight with tempo, just go for bishop to d4. You just capture it. You allow bishop to d4. Now you play rook to e5. Yeah, you would happily now give, give back some material. Now pawn to f4, preparing to claim the rook. And now queen to h6, pinning the pawn as the king is on, on c1. So here queen to e3, unpinning, now again threatening to pick up the rook. And now you play bishop captures on h3. That's how you have to play it. Let's say rook to h1. Now rook to f8. You have completed your development. And now after you finally give back that rook, now just queen captures on e5, bishop captures, and something like rook to f3. And there is counterplay on, on both ends. Uh, no, nothing really spectacular happening here. It's still a position you have to play, but um, all in all, you, you have defended well. However, Magnus played king captures on g7. And now uh, this simply will not do. R Duda plays rook to g1 with check. And now... Uh, 
whatever you play is insufficient. If you go king to h8, just knight captures on c6, comes with tempo, attacks the queen, and that's pretty much it. But captures bishop d4 check, uh, the king has no squares, you have to uh, give up the queen. So Magnus plays king to f7. It is the only move to continue the game. We have pawn to c5, now opening up a discovery. And now, uh, how do you defend this? Look at this, if bishop to e6, uh, knight captures on e6. Queen captures, queen captures on b7, and after queen e7, just queen captures on c6. And yes, you rob the exchange, but your king will not survive um, on f7. There are too many too many threats lurking in the position. You can open up the f file, you can go after the, the king this way. The, I mean, there's... There's not much you can do here. So Magnus plays d5, makes sense. Let's just close the position. And if Duda does not have a move here, then Magnus has defended. But Duda finds it, knight to b5. And what's more, Duda played it instantly. As soon as Magnus played d5, Duda played knight to b5. You, you have to play this. Now you're threatening knight to d6 check with this fork. And it seems like you could capture the knight, but you would not have a great time if you did it. If you play knight upon captures on b5, it's a brutal, brutal uh, line. Queen captures on d5. Now bishop to e6. And now, okay, you could also uh, try queen to e6. But if you try queen to e6, then queen to h5 with check. King to e7. Now queen captures on h7 with check. The uh, d6 square is guarded. King to d8. And now bishop to g5 with check. But rook to e7. Bishop captures, queen captures, and now rook to g8 with check, forcing the king to move back, and now rook g7 will pick up the queen. So back in that position, you could try bishop to e6, but now it's a, it's a very nice mate in three, as now you've taken away all of the squares that the king can use to start running, just queen h5 check, king to f8, rook, uh, or rather queen to h6 check, king to f7, and queen to g7 will be checkmate. So that's what happens if Magnus accepts this knight, which he doesn't. He plays rook to d8. Now he knows that knight to d6 is coming and he prepared a special gift for Duda. So knight to d6 check, rook captures on d6, c captures, we have queen captures on d6 and now f captures on e4. Duda playing with absolute engine precision opening up the f file for the rook, uh, bishop to d7. There is no time uh, for, for anything else. You have to develop the bishop, develop the rook if you want to stand a chance here. So rook to f1 with check and now king to e6 by Magnus. King to g8 is a bit more resilient but uh, I mean, who can uh, who who can uh, play every move and engine move? Uh, so king to e6, and now Duda plays queen to c3, which pretty much uh, drops all the advantage. But it's not easy to uh, to find what to play here. There are ideas like queen to d1, but uh, to, to give you an example of a brute force variation, pawn to e5. This is uh, beautiful. Just threatening rook to f6 check to pick up the queen. So you have to grab the pawn and after queen captures on e5, now you play bishop to d2. Now you're threatening rook to e1 to win the queen. And after the queen moves, now you play queen to f3. So uh, what, what can you play here? Queen to c4 check, doesn't really matter. You're gonna play bishop to c3. Now you can start running. Now queen g3 check. And after king c5, now something like rook to f4. And those are pretty much all forced moves that you have to play in order in order to actually win this. So now if the queen moves, you just get checkmated. Bishop d4 check, king to b5, queen to b3 check. King to a5, bishop to c3 check, king to a6 and rook to a4 with check. It's a, uh, very nasty stuff. But Duda missed it and he played queen to c3 instead of this e5 idea. Uh, now Magnus gets a nice tempo to introduce his rook into the game. Rook to f8. We have e captures on d5, further opening lines towards Magnus's king. c captures on d5 and now rook to e1, threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries. So king back to f7. We have king to b1, not uh, willing to see <laughs> rook to c8 on the board. And now bishop to f5 with check. King to a1 and now rook to c8. All of a sudden Magnus uh, uh, is finding moves that are uh, very, very unpleasant for Duda. We have queen to d4 and now rook to c4 attacking the white queen. We have queen to d1 and now rook to e4 with some ideas of queen to e6. And then you will really have... Um, a hard time uh, of uh, well moving this bishop as uh, well if everything just gets traded 
uh, then uh, you're left in a position where Magnus is up a pawn and he has a past, um, a past D pawn. So here a queen to B3 by Duda, still putting some pressure. We have B6 and now rook to F1, attacking the bishop. So king to E6, defending the bishop. And now the situation on the clock is completely crazy. Duda has some 30 seconds on the clock. Magnus, two and a half minutes. We have bishop to D2 and now queen to H2 by Magnus, putting pressure on the bishop, also putting pressure on the H3 pawn. And now just queen to c3 and uh, you don't want to allow Duda to start checking you uh, uh, for the price of one pawn so just rook to c4 by Magnus and now we have um, uh, queen to e3 with check king to d7 and now rook captures on f5 and this is now incredible after rook captures on g5 uh, it is Magnus who is winning uh, queen to g5 is a move you have to play here but after rook captures on f5 now look at this Queen to h1 check, bishop to e1, blocking check, and now rook to e4. So, of course, Duda saw all of this, but he found rook captures on d5. And now Magnus has to play a move uh, that, um, uh, well, is, is maybe uh, not uh, what you would think. You have to play king to c6 here. And now after king to c6, uh, what do you play? The, the queen has to move and basically the only move you have is queen captures on e4 queen captures and rook d1 and magnus would have this position queen against the rook and bishop and whether you can win this or not it's up to you but you are much better or maybe even winning probably winning if, if you're really good but magnus played king to e6 here and now he missed uh, one a very very uh, interesting move by Duda. Uh, so feel free to pause the video here and try to find what Magnus missed here while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able uh, to spot this, uh, congratulations on realizing that yes, the bishop uh, on d1 will fall, uh, but it's a matter of how you give it up. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen to b3. This is what Magnus missed, and it would not be possible had the king been on c6. And now the problem is if you just play rook captures on e1 with check, there's rook to d1, uh, uh, a counter check, if you will. And now after king to f5, you will just uh, pick up the, the, the rook here. For example, queen to c2 with check, king to f4 queen to f2 with check and the rook hangs that's uh, pretty much it whatever you play doesn't really matter okay, rook captures and you, you you might even win the queen so magnus finds counterplay as he usually does queen captures on e1 and now rook to d1 opens up a discovery with check king to e7 and now okay you can't capture the queen just yet if you capture the queen then uh duda just gets checkmated so you have to be very careful so queen to d5 by duda now uh very unpleasant um uh, threatening all sorts of checks to the black king we have queen to e2 getting the queen out of harm's way and now rook to c1 now trying to go for for, for a sort of a checkmating attack against the black king rook to e6 and now queen to b7 with check we have king to f6 and queen captures on h7 do that even uh, wastes a move to win a pawn because if he's unable to checkmate the black king then this will turn into a into a pawn race so here pawn to a5 as the a7 pawn is hanging as well and now pawn to a3 duda gets rid of back rank weaknesses and now he will be able to lift that rook off of the c1 square uh, so here king e5 by magnus queen to g7 check king to d5 we have queen to d7 check and king to e5 so magnus uh, has to defend uh, the question is how can uh, do the push for for the win here rook to d1 king to f6 now comes queen to d4 with check we have king to f7 and now rook to g1 trying to get some uh, rook to g7 action here so queen to e5 blocking the queen's uh, reach to the g7 uh, square and now queen to d7 check we have rook to e7 and now rook to f1 check king to g6 and now queen to d3 with check we have king to h6 and now rook to g1 threatening mate in one so rook to e6 defending against this and now queen queen to d2 check we have queen to e3 blocking magnus would happily take this into a rook and pawn endgame where he will fight against white's extra pawn now queen to g2 again putting pressure on the black king so now queen to e5 guarding uh, this square the rook covers this square the queen covers this square so you cannot uh, de deliver some sort of a nasty checkmate queen to g4 and now queen to f6 we have pawn to h4 
like we said, at some point the pawn will uh, need to start marching forward. And now rook to e5 by Magnus. A very interesting, uh, a very interesting option here was rook to e3. It comes with the threat of rook captures on a3 as uh, the the b pawn is pinned, and then you would really have to figure out what to play if king to b1. Then you have rook f3, and already you've improved your position by quite a lot. And if some like queen to g5 check, uh, it's uh, for example captures captures. It's I mean, can can you play this? Can do the win this? It's probably a draw with perfect play, but uh, you know. Uh, the, definitely the, the best chance for Magnus. But he played rook to e5, and now Duda plays rook to d1. Uh, we have rook to f5, and now queen to c4. We have pawn to b5, attacking the queen, and now queen to c1 with check. King to h5, and now queen to c7. Uh, with some ideas of going queen to h7, but Magnus says you can do that. Pawn to b4. Uh, rook to f1 was also an option, just trying to uh, trade, off, trade off the rooks. But now, after pawn to b4, which is pretty much always great for you, uh, queen to h7 with check. And now, you can't really block with the queen because the rook hangs so magnus plays king to g4 and now we have queen to g8 with check king to h5 uh, uh or, or rather uh, the, uh, 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 this line was not played just yet um uh, uh th this is what would have happened sorry if b4 dude actually played a4 if uh, if queen to h7 check that's the point uh, now uh, king to g4 and if queen to g8 with check king to h5 rook to d7 and now this actually would be winning for duda uh, sorry about that as there is no defense against rook to h7 but it's um, uh, you know uh, uh, not, not easy to spot this you can give one check but doesn't matter after king to a2 the queen is covering this diagonal <laughs> so okay after b4 pawn to a4 by duda he does not want to open up lines uh, of attack towards the white king and now we have queen to f7. Magnus now prevents uh, queen to h7, obviously. Queen captures on f7, rook captures, and now rook to d5. Check, dude, that takes the game into an endgame. This, I mean, this whole game uh, is, is uh, you know, completely a, 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 a deep, dark forest game. Even I got lost in it, just showing you the moves. So king captures on h4, and now king to a2. And this is uh, extremely important. If uh, uh, Duda does not play king to a2 here, if he captures on a5, which you would expect, b3, and there is no defense against checkmate. So Duda, of course, spots this. He plays king to a2. And now, again, he is objectively winning. We have rook to a7 by Magnus guarding the pawn. And now king to b3. We have king to g4. Magnus's king is so far away. King to c4, we have king to f4, king to b5, and now king to e4, attacking the rook here. So rook to d8, and now pawn to b3, getting that pawn away from the uh, from the white king, and also uh, hoping to at some point pick up the b2 pawn, and then you already have a passed b3 pawn. So here, uh, Duda has to play rook to b8 or rook to e8 check in order to still be winning. He plays rook to c8, which does not win him the game. Uh, incredible as it is, rook to b8 is winning for a very specific reason, uh, that um, and now what can uh, what can Magnus play? Uh, but you you will uh, see this better if I just show you what happened. If rook to c8, now Magnus uh, can, can save the game by by going rook to h7. And now, uh, what do you play here? A, if if you just capture the pawn king, capture on a5, then rook to h2, and then once the b2 pawn uh, has been won, then it is it, just a dead draw. So uh, here, uh, it, interestingly, if rook to g7 is played, uh, now again, uh, doesn't really matter, but uh, if, if king captures, uh, that that's a winning position, but if rook to c3, for example, going after this pawn, now you just play rook back to a7. Uh, and uh, you, you don't get to, to win the b2 pawn, but you don't care if rook captures on b3, rook b7 with check. And now if king to c4, you just go rook captures on b3, king captures and king d4, and uh, this position is a known draw. If king to c2, you just block the king. If b3 check, you just go up the board, uh, or even better here. And if king to c3, king to c5, you are stopping b4, and this is uh, a dead draw. So that's uh, what would happen. So after rook to c8, the move... Uh, that allows Magnus to draw with a move like rook to g7. Magnus played king to d4, and this now again allows Duda to win the game because he has the rook on a7 to be used as a, as a tempo gainer for the white king, which he uh, goes for, of course. King to b6, now attacks the rook, and now it's similar to what we've shown, but after rook to h7, now Duda plays rook to c3. He doesn't grab the pawn, he uh, goes after the b pawn, and now after rook to h8, 
king captures on a5 so magnus will not be uh, winning this pawn we have rook to b8 now magnus defends it and now king to a6 uh, we have rook to a8 with check king to b5 rook to b8 with check and king to a5 uh, so magnus still for the moment defending that pawn on b3 king to d5 and now we have rook to c7 uh, we have king to d4 by magnus and now rook to c6 we have king to d3 and now rook to c5 uh, 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 a lot of moves played in between as players are very low on time here king to d2 and now rook to b5 finally offering a trade uh, but now of course uh, rook to h8 the problem is if you go rook to a8 check king to b4 and now king to c2 hoping to trade pawns uh, do that that will play king to a3 defend the pawn and only then win this pawn and he will just be up two connected pass pawns so after rook to b5 rook to a trade was played by magnus now king b4 we have king to c2 king to a3 and now rook to h1 even trying to stir some trouble with, with a move like rook a1 check but duda just plays rook to c5 with check and he completely eliminates uh, any and all activity uh, magnus might have uh, dreamt of uh, his king having so king to b1 and now rook to c3 so taking every precaution possible before actually winning that b3 pawn uh, and he was in this position on move 88 that magnus calls and resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here whatever you played the uh, the pawn will be won let's say rook h2 rook captures on uh, b3 now you have to connect to pass pawns and you just have to push them the black king completely out of the game uh, of course it's now uh well completely winning for duda but what a game duda completely outplaying magnus finding that beautiful uh beautiful idea of of just going for for queenside castles here i mean absolutely spectacular allowing magnus to win back the piece like this and then going for the exchange sacrifice magnus missing the queen captures on g7 move and then finding rook g1 and then just going c5 and then just knight b5 i mean duda found it all uh, he gave Magnus a chance to bounce back, but this, uh, like I said, this game was one one huge deep dark forest where uh, anyone can get lost. And in this particular game, it was Magnus who got lost in it. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Second, the game of their match. We'll see what happens. Will Magnus be able to, to, to fight back uh, or will it be Duda in the finals? Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Jimmy LeBlanc, and I would like to thank Anderson Vera, Torko Stanquist, Ravishing Reptiles YouTube, and Trevor Terrace for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this wonderful event uh, until it finishes. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.